So, welcome back to this session on design for assembly. Earlier part of this course I have taught you design for quality where we discussed uh, concepts, uh, basic concepts on statistics, the mean and the standard deviation, how they can be used to quantify robustness which in turn can be used to find quality. We introduced uh, Taguchi's concept of quality and how you can use a design of experiment called orthogonal array to design your experimental study, get the responses, how to account for the variation in the responses and hence enable a robust design. So, the agenda for today is we will start talking about design for assembly. This is going to be the outline of the next couple of lectures. First, I will try to give you a generic overview on what is designed for assembly, why it is required, what it is capable of doing. Under design for assembly, we will as usual we will talk about why someone needs design for assembly. In that, we will talk about part handling because an assembly means two parts coming together is what an assembly is. So, we will talk about handling those parts. Then how do you systematically evaluate assemblies? There are a couple of techniques, we will talk about one thing called the Boothroyd which is a very famous approach, Boothroyd Dewurst approach. We will also look at a couple of case studies. This is a generic overview on why such an approach is required. Classically, if you see in the design industry, people have practiced something called over the wall design. Today, we use the word silos, especially when you talk about optimization, people talk about single discipline optimization. If you take an aircraft, they talk about structural optimization they talk about aerodynamic optimization. Aerodynamic is basically fluids, structure is basically the structural finite element kind of approaches. Okay. However, you need to think from a system perspective and that is when multidisciplinary optimization comes into picture. So, the word that is used currently is called the silos, each one is working in their silos and unless they are going to interact, you cannot look at a system level optimization. The same idea is applicable for this slide as well, but predominantly from a process perspective. When you are engaged in the process of product design, what are the different phases? So, you can start from scratch, concept design, detailed design. But this is a little bit more than that, it is not only design, it is process product design, going to launch it on the market, it is going to reach my customers. So, who are all the different uh, people who are involved or what are the different departments that are involved. Okay. This is not a comprehensive picture here, but these are four major players. For instance, the marketing team is something that require that looks into the need analysis they look into the market and then they see they do, they conduct a survey, they conduct a study to understand what is the need, where is the gap and they suggest a particular product needs to be developed. It could be an existing product, but what they will look for instance, if you look at a car, someone who has been doing a hatchback and a sedan, these marketing guys will look in and try to study, conduct a survey and understand how much people are expecting or looking forward for an SUV. Then they say there is a likely market for an SUV and you need to come up with an SUV and these are the different configuration or the specifications that people might be interested. Because an SUV uh, somewhere in the west is not necessarily going to be successful in a country like India. So, within India where all people might use the SUV and what are the specifications or what are the, what should be the characteristics of such an SUV. So, this is what the marketing team does, that is the first one that we are talking about. Okay. 
then the marketing team gives out a concept it says you need to look at a suv and it gives you a raw information about what a potential buyer would expect from the new product then these potential criteria need to be converted into engineering criteria by the engineers slash designers so that is the second one that you are looking at so this is basically passing the ball the ball is nothing but the concept the idea okay but what is happening in or rather what happened in earlier days is there was no interaction between the marketing team and the engineering team the marketing team just did the study there were no clarity on under what conditions who were the set of people how did they conduct the survey all those things but the end product was given to the engineers or the designers and the designers are supposed to come up or realize that particular idea into a product upon that it goes to the manufacturer okay as you can see here with respect to the designer it could be a beautiful design very nice optimal design in all the disciplines that you can imagine very nice design mathematically very strong design but probably there is no technique in the universe that can manufacture such a design today 3d printing or additive manufacturing or rapid prototyping has opened up lot of avenues but still it is not clear what are the failure criteria that are associated with components that are manufactured out of 3d printing though 3d printing has opened up avenues in in manufacturing still there are a lot of limitations with respect to applying it in real life performing parts okay there is one show piece you can always do you can you can make a pistol you can make a artificial heart valve all those things are fine but in a performance perspective in real life performance they have not been able to break through yet so what is happening is when the engineer designs he should also keep in mind that the product should be manufacturable so as a designer one need to have a perspective should have an insight on what are the different manufacturing techniques when you draw something on the computer when you make a 2d or a 3d um, model you should be at the same time the engineer should be able to think through to see how is someone going to come up with this in a manufacturing setup should i be doing casting or should i be doing milling can this particular hole be drilled is it possible with the existing setup one is in a very generic sense is it doable number two is if you are aligned with a particular company you need to know what are the facilities that are available for the company to manufacture or if you're going to subcontract it you should know what are the uh, limitations in terms of manufacturing of your subcontractor so that needs to be taken up front otherwise what happens is after your design cycle it goes to the manufacturer and then you figure this cannot be done it has to come back and you have to retrace this entire design cycle okay so hence it is very important for a designer to appreciate you see, you see the engineer need not go and manufacture okay but should have an insight should know what are the capabilities in terms of manufacturing use that knowledge during the design stage so is the case with assembly also because yeah, assembly is one job where this significant amount of cost comes into picture okay that's when robotic uh, assembly came into picture but something that can be manually assembled is necessarily uh, not uh, as is not possible to be assembled in a robotic assembly line and vice versa okay hence uh, so once the engineering uh, module or the engineering department or the design department gives an uh, gives their final give their final design the manufacturer looks at it and hopefully it is manufacturable otherwise you will have to come back and retrace your design cycle then finally it goes to the sales and service so the deal is interestingly the sales and service guy okay does not or at least in the past did not have any interaction with the engineers and the marketing 
okay. It only comes directly from the manufacturer and their perspective of looking at the product could be entirely different, okay. So, maybe there is some very interesting engineering um, innovation in that particular product that might not uh, that uh, the sales guy might not know, okay. So, uh, hence it is very important for each of these silos or each of these departments to interact with each other. Of late there are even some ISO criteria that requires in a conceptual stage like a materials person, a manufacturer, a designer all of them need to operate at the same location, okay. You cannot say that we have Skype and internet these days so it does not matter where you sit. They have specifically given this condition that they should sit personally physically at the same location at the concept level design. So, before we go into the details a little bit of um, the design for assembly just to motivate uh, here is an example. Just look at this particular design ok. Currently it is a design it is a drawing on paper. The drawing is perfectly fine. Please observe my words the drawing is perfectly fine. Then why would I show? there is some issue beyond the drawing per se. If you do this on computer, I will say good work, good job. But there is some limitation in being able to use this. What is that? Sorry? Drill. The drill, yeah, what is the problem? Drill the hole. Sorry, drill the hole, which hole? This hole? The perpendicular, the, the, the vertical hole, yes. what is the problem? Mm. So, this uh, the entire setup of this the drilling machine will mm. start in the board. So, this guy will hit this one yes. that is what you are saying yes. ok that could be a problem, but uh, what if we reduce the drill head the width of the drill head let us say it is reducible. Whose edges this this edges mm, by casting you can do if you want it, it is advisable to have something like this I agree, but uh, this is doable. There are a lot of right angle corners that we get to see. Let us assume that I can reduce this guy to this big so that it will not hit this. Then it is fixed there is no issue. So, let us say that uh, even, even with this head I might still be able to drill this with a long drill bit correct. So, is there really a problem? Thickness Sorry? Thickness Whose thickness? Material thickness. This material? Yes, sir. You mean this material? No, 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 I just drew it so that you are able to see what I meant is it is what I meant is this drill bit need not be limited there it can come all the way here that is what I meant it can be a longer drill bit. Then this particular drill head need not come here being there itself you can still drill it. Fine. What he told is right number 1 in the current setup there is a problem because this drill head will hit the component corner the edge it will hit ok there is a problem that is one thing. If you try to fix that by using a longer drill bit there is something called an L by D ratio. So, what you are trying to do is, is you are trying to fix it here and in one sense you are trying to fix it there also. So, this might lead to bending and eventually buckling of the drill bit ok because the drill is expected to drill actually ok. So, you are applying forces at both ends and, and it is it tends to. So, there is an L by D ratio that you need to maintain there is a minimum ratio that you need to maintain ok. That will be violated if you try to use a very long slender drill bit. So, if you look at this particular 
design it is perfectly fine from a design perspective but there is a limitation when you want to manufacture it especially when you want to make this hole by drilling however if i didn't give you this picture and i showed this only this particular component here it might still be fine because i can always cast it i can do a casting and i can make this so it does not matter where your hole is how your hole is okay so this is one example whereas uh, but you need to know what sort of a material it is because all materials are not readily available for casting and what is the cost that is associated this is a similar example number 2 similarly the drawing is perfectly fine there is nothing wrong with the drawing but from an implementation or from a performance perspective there could be a problem what is that sorry in the second design it's a rod or it's a an engineering drawing question man what is this this is right that is not a rod that is a dashed line in between which says that is an axis this guy right it's a hole it's a hole or a cavity whatever you would call it this is a simple question actually someone who answered this this is very simple no answers how can you make this hole if you were to machine the product component take a block of material you can get this particular hole a small hole you can get how can you get this hole you cannot get it you need to have a tool to go in and make this carve out this material so you cannot do that okay hence this is the problem with respect to engineering drawing this could be a perfectly fine figure but from a manufacturing perspective this particular thing is not manufacturable unless you are going to cast an injection mold to this part from a machining perspective this is not so this is a limitation so let's say that you work for a company which has predominantly machining apparatus then this particular design is not possible let's say this is an important component that connects to your engine and if you want to change this design the shaft that goes into the engine changes which means the performance of the engine could change the efficiency of the engine could change so you are in a deep chaos so it's very important for the designer to appreciate even today you cannot just say oh there is 3d printing and it will print that is not true so whether you are going to mass manufacture or you are going to build legacy products if you're going to build only 10 of them fine you can do a thing but one day you are going to make 100000 stuff then at least as of today 3d printing is not the way to go it's still not adapted for mass manufacturing it might be in the future but currently not so it is very important for a designer meaning like you don't need to go to the lathe you don't need to go to the workshop and play the drill and play with the lathe to do the comp to realize the components but you should have an idea on what are the limitations what are the advantages of certain methods over the others and how a particular design can be realized to a real life product so these are a couple of examples from the manufacturing perspective but i guess uh, for the design for assembly example 
This is a simple example that I usually use in my class. You know what this is, right? What is this? It's a plot line or a clip. So, there is something nice about this design. From the A assembly perspective, what is that? Sorry? You mean to say if this is component 1 and this is component 2, they are symmetry? Okay, so what is the problem? I mean, sorry, what is the advantage of being symmetry? You are right, they both are symmetric. So, Oh, you mean to say this particular hole? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, fine, but what is the, I mean, what is your point with respect to assembly? Because I said specifically with respect to assembly. I'm, I'm not, I'm not asking for an opinion on the product itself. I'm saying there is something good or bad about this product from an assembly perspective. Okay, there, there could always be a better clip in the market or, or a lousy clip in the market. We are not talking about that. We are taking a clip and most of those clips, if not all, would share that property. So, in that sense, I am very sure. That is a nice uh, point that I have not thought about. Yeah. So, they do not have, yeah. So, that essens the assembly process, let us say. But there is also a thing that what uh, Imran pointed out, this is a specific type of a spring that you need to do, <coughs> but, but it is okay, it is a specific product. So, you do have a specific kind of a spring that fastens both these. Uh, maybe, in this case yes, but need not be in all the clips that we can imagine. Okay. So, coming back to the one is one of the answers that he pointed out, one and two these two are symmetric. So, if you imagine like what he said in a manual assembly or does not matter in a robotic assembly also. Before that, let me ask you a question like, let us say that there is a clip manufacturer. Okay, what is your assumption that how many, how many such clips they would make on a particular day? Sorry? One million. One million. One million is too much, man. Thousands, easily. It again depends on the number of employees and all that. Okay, so even if you put one guy, one person, let's say, woman or man does not matter. One, one person would do at least, um, I don't know, four hundred to five hundred clips per day, easily. I guess. Okay. So with that, what is happening is, if you look at it, there are three major components in this clip the one and two that I have mentioned and the third one is just the spring, that is all. So, what is your assembly process in this? Take the left element, take the right element, keep them together and put the spring. The process need not be the same. Maybe you take the left element, you put the spring and then you insert that. That, that, is, that does not matter. So, there are three steps somehow. You will have to handle part one, you will have to handle part two and you will have to assemble them using a spring that is all. So, the, the, the 1, 2, 3 could be 1, 3, 2 whichever way that does not matter. Okay, But these are the three steps that are involved in it. Right? So, now in this particular case element 1 and 2 are identical. So, the advantage is I do not need to have a separate left side element and a right side element. I can put all of them into a bag and I just take any one of them whatever comes in my left hand is the left element and whichever comes to my right hand is the right element. That is all it is as simple as it is. Okay. So, the way in which this is designed is there was nothing particular okay, 
like there is no asymmetry in this it is symmetric so you can use whichever way you want let's say that you have to have a different left element and a different right element what could be the limitations you have to manufacture them separately that is an important part in this it's just an wooden clip even in an wooden clip it's easier to make 20 such compared to 10 with a different design and another 10 with a different design okay in in such a sense or if you're imagining a metal clip okay that you are going to machine or you are going to bend it and all that imagine making 20 clips or 10 with a particular design and 10 with a particular design you require a different kind of a die you might require a different type of a tool in this the basic needs are the same and you are going to manufacture the same one okay. especially in large designs this will have a huge implication huge implication okay fine and you can see this in, in any kind of an application you know like if you take a car for instance okay it does not matter okay? your uh, for instance your rear view uh, your side mirrors okay? they all are the same it, it only matters which side is your the fixture is that's all okay so it goes this way or it goes that way that's why your mirror is inside the uh, the, the, the cabinet so the mirror is the same okay only the cabinet is going to differ and many for instance they have something called the crash cams which tries to protect the occupant from a crash situation okay it goes like this like a c and then it is symmetric it does not matter okay which way you do it so there are a lot of symmetric symmetry many of the designs if you look at it they take advantage of the symmetry so that is one particular case that we have discussed here yeah so while designing you might actually always come up with a design let's say weight was a weight or a or a particular grip was a was an important factor in this okay. so you might have ended up reducing the weight or increase the grip by coming up with an unsymmetric design but if you look at the cost that you would have incurred to build the respective dies might actually overshoot the advantage of your grip or the weight reduction so it is interest it is important for the designer to appreciate that and have these ideas built at the design stage that is important okay not after you build and test it